Welcome to the Relationship Workout for Men podcast. This episode is just a preview of what you'll find in the full Relationship Fitness for Men program. If you're serious about building a stronger, happier relationship, check out relationshipfitness.com to access all episodes, plus tools to assess and improve the quality of your relationship and your very own on-demand and private AI relationship coach. Visit relationshipfitness.com to learn more. Welcome to Relationship Workout for Men, a podcast dedicated to helping men be intentional in choosing a better partner and being a better partner for the person they choose. Season 7, Episode 1, Do Unto Others. In Season 7, we explore Relationship Workout Core Number 6, Kindness, discussing how to answer the foundational question, do you care about each other's needs? So why is kindness a core strength area? Well, put simply, it's impossible to have a quality relationship if you don't care about each other's needs. One way to demonstrate this caring is through unselfish and reciprocated acts of kindness. Acts of kindness can include give and give back generosity, along with each of you approaching differences and points of view from a place of fairness. So let me start the episode by asking a somewhat cynical question. What happened to the virtue of kindness? Remember the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you? It seems that in modern society, kind and nice just don't seem to cut it anymore. The nice guy finishes last, remember? Okay, maybe that was a bit too cynical, but kindness alone isn't necessarily going to get you that dream job you've pined for. Kindness isn't going to pay the mortgage either. Can you imagine a loan officer saying, oh, that's okay, you're such a nice guy, you don't have to worry about paying the mortgage this month. Hey, what the heck, let's have the bank make your next year's payments. Time to wake up from that fantasy. But does kindness help us in our intimate relationships? We'll go to a singles bar and try to chat up that cute blonde in the alluring dress. More times than not, she'll give you the look over and unless you pass her hotness test, well, she'll give you the buzz off stare as if your second class citizenship had already been revoked. Yes, you may be a really nice guy oozing with kindness to share with that special someone, but she's already made you a strikeout statistic before you've even had a chance to swing the bat at a first pitch. Having said this, research confirms that the most enduring trait people want in an intimate partner is kindness. In fact, in a study of 37 cultures from around the world, 16,000 people were asked about their most desired traits in a mate. For both sexes, the first preference was kindness, with the second preference being intelligence. Indeed, kindness is intertwined in many messages delivered throughout the centuries. Love is patient, love is kind from St. Paul in the New Testament. My religion is very simple, my religion is kindness from the Dalai Lama. There is one word which may serve as a rule of practice for all of one's life, reciprocity, Confucius. If you haven't any charity in your heart, you have the worst kind of heart trouble, Bob Hope. You cannot do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle, Plato. By swallowing evil words unsaid, no one's ever harmed his stomach, Winston Churchill. The ideals which have lighted my way and time after time have given me new courage to face life cheerfully, have been kindness, beauty, and truth. Albert Einstein. It does seem like a bit of a no-brainer that being kind to your partner is a relationship strong way to go. Most, if not all, men and women probably don't put it on their possible intimate partner checklist. Rude and doesn't care about my needs. Sounds rather absurd when you put it that way. No doubt, we'd all prefer an intimate partner who is kind to us. As well, if you truly care about your lover's happiness, then it seems to follow that you'd feel compelled to give whatever you have the opportunity. After all, as Ross Buck states in The Psychology of Gratitude, the gratitude of exchange and the gratitude of caring, when there is, quote, a personal relationship associated with love and bonding, giving benefits and receiving benefits are mutually supportive. Literally, the more you give, the more you get, end quote. Put another way, Love put into practice is a positive sum game. It starts with one partner, let's say you for simplicity, starting the giving with an act of generosity. Of course, this begs the question, what really is an act of generosity? More on this in later episodes. 
The positive sum game continues with her seeing your act of generosity and valuing what you've given to her. After all, if she doesn't realize that you've given something to her and or if she doesn't value it, well, then it may be difficult for her to appreciate it. With that, here are the strong and weak strategies one can follow in the kindness department, which we'll discuss in the season on kindness. Strategy number one, generosity versus selfishness. Generosity starts with the basics of just giving for the sake of thinking about your lover and wanting to do something spontaneously special for her. Buy her some flowers, write her a card, make her a romantic dinner, surprise her with a massage. You get the idea. We can so often get laser focused on our own list of anxiety generating to do's and needs that we just fall into take and consume mode. Strategy number two, fair cooperation versus competition. And let's not forget about fairness. Have a difference of opinion and there's a risk that the once lovers can come out of their corners fighting. It's all about winning and getting one's way versus caring and being flexible enough to search for giving compromise. True kindness is about finding fairness through cooperation when there are differences. Give some to get some. Strategy number three, gratitude versus indifference or resentment. Okay, so your partner just went out of her way to give you something. Do you feel gratitude and reciprocate with at least giving her a huge thank you? Or do you respond with indifference? Or worse yet, do you feel resentment that she did something for you? Three strategies, three strategy choices. Go weak or go strong, your choice. But before we dive into strategy number one, generosity versus selfishness, let me share our personal story about dating someone who seemed to approach our relationship more from an all about me versus an all about we perspective in episode two, Me Ouch. Thanks for listening. To listen to all episodes in this season, visit relationshipfitness.com. There you'll find not only a complete library of episodes, but also aligned playbook articles, tools designed to help you assess, improve, and manage the quality of your relationship and your very own AI relationship coach to get private, on-demand coaching whenever you need it. Go to relationshipfitness.com to start transforming your relationship today for more fun and less drama.